In today's video, we are going to see if we do a quick break bleed on the Evolution Cart D5, if that will firm up the spongy brake pedal feel. I uh, made a YouTube short and I asked D5 owners if they thought their brake pedal felt spongy, and 78% of you said, yes, my brakes feel spongy. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to see if for just $12 worth of brake fluid, if we put some fresh fluid in and try to bleed out any of the remaining air that might be trapped in there from the factory bleed, uh, if that makes a difference in pedal feel. It may or may not. So this is a good test to see if it's worthwhile trying to do it because it might take a little bit of time. So we have two hypotheses of maybe why the brake's feeling spongy. Now, it might just be a way underpowered braking system and it is the way it's gonna feel. That's what the dealers have told me. That's just how the brakes feel. So my second hypothesis is maybe that the fluid has got a little bit of water in it. And the third is that maybe the brake lines have a little bit of air in them. So whoever did the original brake bleed, whether it was done overseas or whether it was done here by our dealer, maybe they're doing so many of these brake bleeds that they just don't have time to do a good job. So we're gonna try to do the best bleed and best new fluid we can to see if that solves anything, or maybe the brakes are just underpowered and that's how they feel. So to do this job outside of your $12 worth of new brake fluid that you might need, I have a couple extra little tools here. This tool um, will help us determine if the current brake fluid has moisture in it. So I'm gonna show you how that works. It's $21, completely not necessary, but if you wanna have something like this around the house to test brake fluid to see if it's reaching a critical or dangerous point, it's a kind of handy tool for that. We have a fluid extractor. You know, if you're at home, you already have a turkey baster or something like that, something that you uh, can suck out the existing fluid with. Um, you could use that. Uh, for me, we grabbed one of these for $11 off Amazon. Pretty handy to have. It's got a lot of good suction. And you might even be able to reverse bleed with it by sucking the brake fluid out uh, with it. If, if you want to braid your brakes alone, you can either make a little bottle with some extra tubing uh, and an old, you know, a bottle of water or a Gatorade bottle that you have laying around. Or you can grab something like this. This is a brake bleed specific bottle that helps you when you're trying to do this alone. Uh, you can hang it off the axle and it has a nice little um, rubber grommet that like clips directly onto the brake nipples, keeps things from kind of getting messy. So if you do have time and you're going to order supplies, ordering a couple extra supplies might help you make a mess on your garage floor. So uh, the only other thing you might need if we're going to take off the rear wheels uh, to get to the nipples, you may need uh, an iron to take that off. And from the best I can understand, I think there are eight mils. So it feels to me like all of the nipples um, for the different brake bleeder lines are an eight millimeter. So you will need an eight millimeter and uh, let's get started. So brake fluid is obviously in this little mystery cap. There's another cap underneath that you will take off. And then under there, there is a third cap. And under that, there is a little filter so it's kind of like nesting dolls of caps inside of there. And this is where our stock brake fluid is. So the first thing we're gonna do is test it. Um, this brake fluid tester has a couple different features which I like. It lets you select the different modes. So in the menu, that really is just the different type of brake fluid. So this is dot four. And I wanted to test this to just see what we're looking at. And so when you stick this in here, it's going to be hard for you guys to actually see on the camera. But when I get it down in the fluid, let me see here. We're actually getting a fairly high water concentration. This cart is only eight months old. And right now I'm seeing kind of a reading jump between one and a half to two and a half percent, which is in the okay range, but it was kind of up there a little bit, but we're looking at it's kind of in the okay range. I'm hoping when we test brand new brake fluid, it's almost at zero. So let's give that a try. So brake fluid, if it's left without the seal on it, it can absorb water just by being in the world, in, in the environment. It will automatically suck moisture into it. So if you are gonna do a bleed, what you really want is a brand new bottle. 
uh, of brake fluid where you're just breaking the seal right now. So using our same brake tester, let's stick it in here and see what we get. Okay. So it's definitely down from what we were at before. It's not zero, but the tester is down at the 0 0.5 level. So it's fresh or about two or three bars less. So the cart definitely has moisture in its fluid. Uh, I mean, it's not brand new, but um, in a brand new bottle that we just cracked open, we're getting two bars. And in the cart, we were getting three, four, five bars of moisture in the brake fluid. So it's definitely fluid with less moisture going in than what was in there before. So that's a good start. All right, so we got the rear wheel off. This way we can get access to the bleeder valve um, right here on the rear brakes. And the first thing I'm gonna do is suck out a bit of that liquid using our syringe. We're gonna suck out the existing brake fluid uh, and then we are going to replace it and start to pull through the good fluid and try to get all the air bubbles and all the old fluid out. So we were able to suck about this much of the old brake fluid out of the reservoir. Uh, and now we will top it up with some fresh stuff before we start the bleeding process. All right, and now we're gonna start with the back. Um, the cart kind of comes out of the middle. It goes two rubber lines to the front, a metal line down the middle, two rubber lines to the back. So you wanna start your bleeding on the furthest away from the brake pedal. So that's typically this side. So this is where we're gonna start. We'll go to the back left and then the front and the driver's side front. Okay, so we got the bottle. The hose is going up mostly and we want gravity to kind of help protect the bubbles from coming backwards. Uh, this end is in the fluid, so that should be good to go. I'm going to slowly press on the brake pedal. And ease it back up. And I'm going to press on it one more time. So after doing the backs, uh, you can do the backs without taking the wheels off. You just gotta kind of lay down and reach around there to get to the bleeders. So you don't really need to take your wheels off. The front is really easy. They're uh, accessible right here. You can loop your hose kind of up over the bar, crack it loose, push the brake down, tighten, lift the pedal up, crack it loose, push the brake down, tighten and repeat. So this is the front here, the other side. Uh, just finished now and I while you're doing that make sure you keep an eye on your fluid levels and as it works its way through you may have to top it up a little bit again and again so um, yeah that's the system that I've done so far okay it's the next day and we are doing some brake testing from our brake bleed I've been around the block once and the first thing I noticed is not much difference you're not gonna get magic breaks just by bleeding with fresh fluid and doing a good job. I do feel like they work a little bit better in the second part of the brake travel. Let me just show you here, I'm gonna brake and push harder. Still very sponge-like, doesn't feel very consistent and you gotta use a lot of pedal power. The bottom half feels a little bit tighter than it did before, but I would say overall braking performance has increased by maybe five, five to 10% in the bottom half of the travel, but that's it. It's not like it's a night and day difference in any capacity. So um, if you wanna do it, it's worth a try, but it is not the magic fix for these evolution carts. Definitely five to 10% better, but that's all you're gonna get. Ready? All right, have a good one.